Hi, friends! Welcome to Freestyle Repertory Theater and Synergy Theater's production of... Oh, boy, oh, boy. Synergy Theater's production All right, that was a, a, a false start. Hello, Ruby Adamowski. Welcome. Ruby, we are going to need you to turn your camera off at this time. Ah, uh, she's a doll. All right, forgive me, folks. Uh, uh, we are. I'm going to turn it off for her. <laughs> yes. Um, he uh, hello, Ruby. Ruby Adamowski, can you please turn your video off at this time? Ryan. All right, we are. I can do it for you, Ruby. Okay, please go. go ahead, Laura, and do that. Thank you very much. All right. One more time from the top. I'm so sorry about that, everybody. But thank you for being here. My friends, Freestyle Repertory Theater and Synergy Theater proudly present right away. We are coming to you live on Facebook and YouTube. And now, please welcome the hosts of our show, Laura Livingston and Michael Durkin. Hi, everybody. Hi, I am Mike Durkin. I am the executive director of Freestyle Repertory Theater here in New York City is where we are. And I'm Laura Livingston. I'm the artistic director of Freestyle Rep. Uh, tonight's show is right away. It's a co-production between Freestyle Repertory Theater and Synergy Theater out there in California. Uh, two companies divided by a, a continent, but united in the belief that improvisation is an important theatrical art form. Indeed, indeed. Uh, we've been presenting right away as a monthly online show, and we started on May 25th, 2020, which means next month, to our surprise, will be our anniversary. Uh, but tonight is our 12th performance, so that makes mm -hmm. it a kind of a milestone tonight. Uh, the show was born out of the desire to keep creative people working together in in that our time of isolation and, and uncertainty. And we have truly appreciated all the wonderful people who have shown up to do that. Now, here's how the show is going to work. We have five playwrights, and they will have 45 minutes to write a brand spanking new play. And those plays will be based on a suggestion from you, our lovely, wonderful audience. And while they're off writing, you, our lovely, wonderful audience, are invited to play some improv games with me and Mike. Um, I think most people like to use pencil and paper to do that, people who've done this before. Uh, so you might want to grab that now, pencil and paper. And after 45 minutes, uh, the playwrights will return and they will present the world premiere of their brand new work. Now, before we uh, introduce tonight's playwright, there's a couple of housekeeping things to go over. For those of you who are participating via Zoom, uh, uh, we ask that you keep yourself muted and your video off for now. Uh, there's going to be times when we'll ask you to turn your video on, your, your microphone on, but for right now, keep it off uh, because we are streaming live on Zoom and on YouTube and on Facebook. So uh, uh, when your video and your microphone are on, you can be seen and heard by millions of people. So uh, uh, if, if you choose not to, you keep those things off. Uh, might we also suggest that you uh, go down to the, hide your non-video participants. And you do that by going down to the lower left-hand corner uh, of your screen there, and there's a, a camera icon, and right next to it, a little carrot. And just press that carrot, and that'll bring up a menu. And then uh, down at the bottom of that menu will be video settings. Hit that one, go onto that screen, and scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a, a place where it says hide non-video participants, and just mark that box. Uh, might we also say that... Uh, Love to have you open up your chat feature, which is once again right there at the middle of your screen there on the bottom of your uh, toolbar down there, because uh, we'll be using that for uh, getting suggestions to inspire our playwrights. And speaking of playwrights, let's introduce our intrepid writer for tonight. Um, let's start out with Kat Coppett. <laughs> runs Motco Improv Theater up in Schenectady and you do uh, shows every Friday and Saturday on online. We I do. Talk, oh, 
I caught a couple and I can recommend them, folks. Check them out, Mopco. And also she's the founder of Pop It, a company that synthesizes improv story, business goals, and organizational psychology, and wrote a book, Training to Imagine, to uh, synthesize all those aforementioned wonderful She wrote the book. Yeah, how you doing, Tam? I'm doing great. I know you're guesting with Synergy. Are you still, do you have a show coming up with them? I am. We just finished a serial that I directed for them. So I got my director chops exercised uh, called Family Trust, sort of a, um, and we have, we have lots of good yummy stuff coming up in a new season and a fundraiser on June 12th. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Great, great to have you, Kat. Great to have you. And listen, here's the next. Uh, here you talk about Synergy Theater. You can't talk about Synergy Theater without talking about Ken Adams, who is the artistic director and the co-producer of our show tonight and our shows every night. He's been uh, doing groundbreaking work out there in Walnut Creek. Uh, he's also the author of How to improvise a full-length play the art of spontaneous theater and it was a delight to have him here in new york 30 years ago um when he broke into improv uh we're here with freestyle rep ken couldn't be happier to see you thank you so much i'm excited to be here hello laura hello mike hello everyone. yeah 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 hey. well get that paper and pencil ready ken all right i'm ready to go all right cool all right. Uh, Lisa Thompson has been writing with Monday Night Playgrounds Bay Area Company, and she asked if I could speak for her. Would you watch a movie about second parents? Why are you asking that? Huh? I'm writing it. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I, I find it poignant that an improviser would be want to write a movie about second chances. I feel that's heartfelt and something kind of all improvisers at times are like, dang, if I could do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to have you here, Lisa. It's good to right. have you, as always. And it's also good to have somebody I like to call Valps. Her name is Laura Valpi. She uh, started her career in improvisation in Seattle with uh, Unexpected Production down there at the Marketplace Theater. Uh, she's been performing with us. Couldn't be more happy about that for the last 20 years, teaching and performing. And uh, her play, Where's the Baby? Uh, parentheses, Parenting in Pieces, received a stage reading here in New York City at the Barrow Group. So good to have you. Uh, good to have you. Are those okay. kids in bed? Yeah, right. Are you oh. kidding me? Oh my gosh, did you see them? Although, let's see, what are they probably doing right now? They're probably jumping on bones and driving him crazy. But you know what? That's fine. Mommy has a show. So Mommy? So it's daddy's <laughs> turn and, to do uh, Mommy I has a show. Laura Valpy, that um, that uh, the the title piece, uh, Where's the Baby, is, is being done on Zoom like this month, right? Yeah. Um, it's either May 1st or May 2nd. Um, I think both of those days are part of a women's playwriting festival for um, a group called Sparks. Um, Sparks Creative Works. It's a Long Island company. And it's the first time that somebody else is directing something that I wrote and like has cast actors and stuff. And they're like all rehearsing and they're gonna pre-record it on Zoom. What's that? I, and you have no idea what's going on. I know the the one thing one thing I do know that I'm fascinated by and so excited by is that one of the actors is um, a deaf person, so she will be communicating purely through ASL. Um, I'm just I just love this idea. I love the idea of the inclusive casting, and I think it's going to work really well. So I'm I'm excited to see it when cool. everyone else sees it too. So, cool, cool. Anyway, yay! Thanks. Good to have you here. Good to Thank have you here. All right, and jumping into the writer's pool for the first time is a crazy man named Craig <laughs> Puffbestill. Uh, and he has written a gazillion plays, and you, audience members, have probably been in one if you're in theater. Uh, here, are, here are some titles. Months on End, Somewhere in Between, The Dunes, Life is Short, a whole collection called Choosing Size. He's also uh, been a finalist for the Heidman Award uh, six times, not just been one once, six times. And he received the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival's Award for Excellence 
playwriting, and he has edited two volumes of previously unpublished plays by Pulitzer Prize winner William Inge, a fellow Kansan of mine. Uh, so, uh, Craig, I, I don't. I didn't even list most of what you've done. It's great to have you here. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I've got a history of in 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 some of these uh, time limited theater things. I used to be one of the head writers for the A Train plays, where we would write a short play or musical, book for a musical, in the time that it took you to get from 207th Street all the way out to Far Rockaway. Uh, <laughs> cool. So. cool. I've, I've slept. Terror for you. Right? I've slept. I've slept on that train a couple of times. So. <laughs> you were the guy. <laughs> that was the guy. All right. Now, along with Craig, should we bring all of our playwrights back on the screen? Everybody, come back, uh, audience. If you would, uh, uh, open up your chat feature down there in the, in the middle of your uh, uh, taskbar down there, and uh, each of the playwrights is going to ask you for a suggestion to kind of kickstart their play into gear and. Uh, when they ask for those suggestions, if you have an idea, write it in the chat, okay? All right, here we go. Ken, why don't you get something to get yourself started off? All right, so stick with me. Here's what I'm doing. Back in 1897, a playwright named Arthur Schnitzer wrote a play called La Ronde. And La Ronde is a series of two-person scenes in which one character from each scene carries over to the next. Improvisers love this play, and there's a famous improv format that we call La Ronde, in which we do exactly that. So tonight, I am going to write an original play in the style of La Ronde. So I have six actors at my disposal, the other six wonderful people you see on the screen today. <laughs> and so they will all have a role in the play. And what I need for my suggestion is six professions. So everybody, please type in a, uh, a job, a profession, and give me a moment so I have to write them down. Mortician, ice fisher person. Matuse, Matuse, a window, uh, oh, I'll let you do them. All right, I see wedding planner, uh, tiger wrangler, uh, barber, and a uh, uh, fish thrower. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my six professions are mortician, ice fisher person, wedding planner, tiger wrangler, barber, and fish thrower. Thank you, and I apologize in advance. <laughs> Bye. Cat. Cat. Ow. You wow. Can be, you can be uh, sure. Can I, have a, <laughs> can I have a question, please? There you go. One measly little question. A question. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, I will take, are you my mother? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, Lisa, what are you looking for? I am looking for a genre and an emotion or something that evokes an emotion. A, uh, 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 a style, a genre, and an emotion that, uh, just any something kind of emotion. That, something that evokes an emotion, Mike. Something that evokes an emotion, all right. You got it, Lisa? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take uh, sci-fi and ennui. Excellent. Craig, what do you want? I'm I'm gonna steal part of Lisa's there. I like that. I'll take a, I'll take a genre and a location. Mm. Oh boy, is pushing that more. Uh -huh. Oh, noir in Budapest. I love it. Oh, wow. Is yeah. that it? Noir in oh. Budapest? And Laura Valpi, what can we get you? Well, uh, I attempted um, some spring cleaning today. So my question for you all is, what is something that you have too much of or too many of? be anything what do you have too much of uh -huh. all right i'll give it a few for them to scroll in yeah oh my goodness on my phone i have to actually scroll oh my gosh so many great things <laughs> i'm gonna go stones 
stones. stones. Someone has too many stones. I want it. Fascinating. Keith Richards says so that. Lint. All right. So really oh. quickly, uh, let's just uh, remind what we got. Kat, what did you get? I got the question, are you my mother? Excellent. Lisa? I got sci-fi and ennui. Excellent. Laura Valpy? Stones. Uh, Craig? This will be a noir thriller in Budapest. And Ken, uh, why don't you give us a short list of the... Uh... <laughs> um, my six character suggestions were mortician, ice fisher person, wedding planner, tiger wrangler, barber, and fish thrower. All right. <laughs> thrower. All right. All right. Good. All right. So now that's wonderful. Writers, in a few moments, uh, we're going to send you away uh, for 45 minutes. Keep your eye out for texts because we're going to be sending you texts and we'll be sending you time reminders. Uh, uh, and uh, as always, the message to you guys and the message to all of you who will be staying with us, whatever you write is great. It's great. It's fun. So if you guys are ready, on your masks, get set right away. Have a good one. There you go. All right. All right. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about those people. All right. Mike, did you set your timer? I just realized I, I didn't need to turn mine off. I, I will set my timer right now. All right. And I will say to everyone in the audience, you can turn on your videos and uh, sound as the writers are turning theirs off and, and shutting us out. Um, you can come on in and wave hello. And if you are just joining us or um, didn't hear us say this earlier, this is going to be live. This is being live streamed on YouTube and Facebook. So if you don't want to be seen by the internet and everybody, just keep your video off. But still participate. You're more than welcome to participate in tonight's expert exercises. And if you haven't already, go ahead and uh, grab something to write with. Uh, I think most people like a uh, paper and and pencil or pen. Um, and uh, whether or not you've done improv before, uh, the most important thing is, and it bears with whatever you do is right. We just say yes to our own first ideas and we totally agree with each other. For anything we write tonight, of as a, a rough draft. It's going to be thrown away anyway. So you might as well clap down the first mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. And yes, Mike? Uh, so we're going to start, you know, you're kind of breaking up to me. I don't know if you're breaking up to everybody else, yes. but you're, you're it's breaking up a little bit to me. And I think the most important thing that we want to reinforce is, you know, just go with what you're thinking. Go with what you're thinking. It's just great. So I, I'm about to do a gibber story. Do you want to kind of lead yeah. into this? Oh, dear. Uh, Laura Livingston? Well, I'm concerned because I'm breaking up. But no, you're what, not. What will happen is... Good now. is um, Mike will say, Mike will tell you a story and it's gonna be what, maybe six sentences long, maybe, we'll see. So if he said something like, You would write down, as if you're the only person who understands that, write down in English, the translation of what, of what he said. And whatever you write down will be exactly perfect. And then perfect. he'll, Say another sentence and pause a moment for you to write down the translation. Again, acting like you're the only person in the world who speaks English and the, the language you speak. It's going to be a story. Here we go. Brasse la cacha de grasso et la groupe de ce et la ronde gasse rata. Mm. 
Bobrosh Negard, La Storin e Kras La Shuka. Brushen la casuche, la chute et multe ses carondats. Going to be two more sentences in this story. <sighs> Brosalo. La stoche et la crom da barga. Is that the last sentence? Oh, there's one more after this. Amber Crossed. La Seshishuni e Crossota la Mugra e Shanda Basun. Basun. All right. Kurt made me say Basun. I, 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 it was in my head, I couldn't help it. I don't necessarily mean the instrument, but uh, it could be. I don't know. But I am I am dying to know what Mike said to us. Who is going to translate that? <laughs> All right, uh, Leone, is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are gonna, sure. Should I just dive in, or are you going to repeat yourself? <laughs> you can. Oh, okay. good luck on that one. <laughs> <laughs> <Just get going. laughs> you invited you invited me over, and now you have regret. I didn't mean to overstep your boundaries. Perhaps it was over the top that I brought in my Harley Davidson, Harley Davidson parked it in, in the living room. And now I can't get it to start. And I can't afford to get it fixed. But don't put this all on me. You knew what I'm like. You know what I'm like. Uh -huh. Excellent. Honestly, that, that was my story. That you was did, it. You did a what monologue, was, Mike. Did you know it was a monologue when you said it? That was I, you know, I, I didn't know. I only knew, I mean, it was Harley Davidson was in my head for the whole time. So I don't know how Leone, I don't know how you got that. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, who, who else would like to read theirs? One of the things I love is finding out how wildly divergent things get. Um, oh, good. Yeah. We got a lot of. I see your, saw your hand go up right away. So am I on? You're yeah. on. Hey. I don't like sitting so high in a tree. The squirrels are fighting me for space. I'm not a coward, but these guys are scary. I don't mm -hmm. want to get hurt. Using good sense, I think I'll just get down. Now they're all laughing at me. It's <laughs> yeah. exactly right. And the title of that is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. I Betty, I don't know how you did that. That's incredible. Uh, uh, Mike Durkin, can uh, do we have time? Can we do? Some we do. Work? We do have time. We have a couple. We have Mike a couple. Miller all ready to go. Can you switch your microphone on, Mike Miller? Yeah. Yep. Um, the couple went out for a walk every evening. Harmony abounded as they strolled the fields and hills of the town, until one night tragedy struck. A thunderstorm caught them on top of a hill, drenching them with cold rain. They huddled for warmth under a bush. That is where they were found the next day, embraced in love. In love. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was a tearjerker, man. You had to get the bassoon in twice at the end. <laughs> you yeah, know, which is which is good. I mean, I, I, yeah, I did remember that at one point I used Sasso. Uh, a couple of times, and I wondered if anybody would ever repeat uh, the Sasso. I don't know. I didn't know what it was, but uh, I repeated it. You know what we should do? 
I found it interesting that uh, uh, two of them that we heard were monologues, speaking in the first person, and then Mike was speaking in the third person. And I just, I love how, uh, you know, we all make different choices at the beginning, but then it branches out in different ways. And uh, you know what we ought to do? We ought to we ought to send them a, a, a suggestion. How many minutes do they have, Mike? Uh, how many minutes have we? What was the question? How many minutes do they have left? They have about uh, 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 about thirty six minutes left. All right. Just wanted to get back timing on my side here. Oh yeah, so, let's get a suggestion. So get those chats open because now we're going to ask. Here's the here's what I want to send them. I want to send them a distinct sound that you just don't happen to hear every day. But it's very uh, distinct. So put that in, get your chats going, and I'll get my chat opened here uh, and see what we come up with, with a distinct sound that you don't happen to hear every... <laughs> <laughs> God, you guys are great. You guys are good. You know, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with that brain mule. I'm going to go with brain mule. Okay, so. Uh, brain mule. All right, so you're going to send them the time and send them that. I, I will. Excellent, excellent. Okay, and I am going to try an experiment here. Um, we have, you've been with us before. We've, we've done really wider games, and I thought it might be fun to do, um, it's not an active game, but it's a it's a game that uh, um, we have played, the, the, the performers in our company have played for years, um, in which we we make up a character by pretending we all know that um, and just talking about them a bit. And Mike, we didn't think that you'd be busy now and not able to demonstrate. But I'm that. almost there. Okay. So, so uh, as an example, if uh, I said something like, um, uh, I, I used to... Uh, I think we all know a guy named Cliff Johnson. Oh, Cliff? Cliff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very tall fellow, if, if I'm tall guy, very tall guy. Yeah, yeah, and and he really liked apples. You know, So we'd just be agreeing with each other and adding a detail as though we knew that person. So um, the way I'd like to try it is I'll, uh, um, I'll, make up a, I'll make up a new person and then just Raise your hand if you want to add a character trait on whatever you say will be rough, as long as it doesn't take away a character trait somebody else said. Like I wouldn't, it wouldn't be okay for me to say, but he was really short after Mike says he's tall. But anything else that I say about him is absolutely fine. So um, once, once there were, I, oh yeah, uh, you know, you know who everyone here knows, Mike? Who's yeah. that? Um, uh, Cynthia Milady. Cynthia Milady. Oh yeah, Cynthia Milady. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ro. Ro. Cynthia, she drives like a maniac in these streets. Drives like a maniac. Honest to God, I I've been in her car. It's just yeah. Oh, I, I think uh, Heidi. Hi, do you know Cynthia? Yeah. Oh man. I, I've always admired Cynthia because her sparkly purple boots. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And sometimes they would be oh, nice and, if her legs weren't so short. What's that? And that would be nice if her legs weren't so short. Yeah, they almost come up to her uh, hips, don't they? Those the, mm -hmm. uh, Mike, I think you know Cynthia. Yeah, but you know, for all of her zaniness, she's a tremendous baker. Her butterscotch brownies are to die for. Oh, I've had those. I've had those. <laughs> yes, I have. Deborah knows her. I know Deborah knows her. I think oh, she's yeah, yeah. Well, those brownies are good, but you got to be quick because she's always carrying that silly little monkey around with her. I don't yeah, know why the, that monkey's. I don't know why she does that because the monkey is a problem. Uh, it's the brownies. Yeah. I, I think Will might know uh, Cynthia too. I don't know. Will, do you know Cynthia? I do, and I'm just surprised that she came back around here after that incident with that monkey. Uh, <laughs> Honest to God. I, I don't know if Karen was there when that happened or not. Karen, you know Cynthia, I believe, don't you? I do. I was just meeting with her last week. We had coffee, and she said she's going to run for mayor. Oh, <laughs> He'd be great. He would be great. <laughs> uh, you got... Yep, Mike? No, no, you got enough, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I've got plenty. I've got plenty. Because uh, um, now I'd like to do this game 
called uh, that I call finish my sentence or I'll uh, grab your grab your pencil and your paper uh, because what I'd like to do is uh, I'll, I'll say the beginning of a sentence and you finish it it doesn't have to be just a sentence if you have if you I'll go pretty quick but it doesn't have to be only a sentence you could write more if you have time um, and what was her name I forgot already Cynthia Milady. 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 Cynthia Milady. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. Beginning of this sentence is Cynthia Milady was wearing her purple boot and feeling. Feeling? Feeling. Okay, I'm going to start another. She walked into her campaign headquarters with her monkey on her shoulder. And for the first time, Finish that one up if you haven't already. And that's when she noticed. finished on that one something had to be done so she jumped into her car and Next sentence starts, unfortunately. Okay, here comes another one. Mm. If only the brownies. And this is going to be the last sentence. So ever since then, Hmm. 
All right. All right. I hope people enjoyed writing that as much as I did <laughs> thinking about trying to remember these sentence beginnings I made up. <laughs> uh, hey, Mike, is it time for a, a, a suggestion? We could read a couple of these prior to going for the suggestion. So why don't, we, why don't we do that? All right, okay. Who would like to read this story? Uh, uh, about who, what's her name? Uh, Cynthia Milady. Look, a row, is that, a, is that an offer there? Yeah. All right, okay. So I will do my best to read the sentence beginning and then you finish it, okay? All okay. right. Wearing her purple boots, Cynthia Milady was feeling sexy as a snake. She walked into the campaign headquarters with her monkey, and for the first time, the monkey pooped in her hair. <laughs> That's when she first noticed that her hair frequently smelled like poop. <laughs> <laughs> Something had to be done, so she jumped into her car and bought the monkey diapers. <laughs> Unfortunately, the monkey became enraged, pulled the diaper off and threw it at her. If only the brownies didn't make the monkey poop so much. <laughs> so ever since then, Cynthia wears a shower cap. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. Uh, it is, this would be a good time to uh, send another uh, suggestion to the, um, to the playwrights. So uh, once again, I'm going to open up my chat and, uh, and you open up your chat. And uh, let's, uh, one of the characters is going to do a monologue and it's going to be a monologue about what? Oh, uh. It's going to be a monologue. <laughs> hey, listen. There's a, there's an over accentuation of pooping in this uh, in this group here. <laughs> the first uh, time uh, taking a shower by themselves. Uh, uh, in the put it in the chat. Oh man! But Mike, I'm, I'm going to take I'm taking Mike's. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jeez. I have to say, I'm taking. I'm not, Mike's was uh, what was where was you brushing teeth? I'm going to give them brushing teeth, which is which is better than brushing tooth, <laughs> <laughs> and an entirely different meaning. Oh, he could have had bassoons. That would be good too. I and saw bassoons. I, up, I, I think I, I think I think I'm ruling out bassoons for the rest of the night and poop. I don't oh. know, or pooping in bassoons. Oh, one or the other. All right, now listen. I'm gonna, I got I got to send this to them. Mike Durkin has become power mad. He's making rules now. Um, <laughs> I have to say that the meaning of their cat's life was something I thought would be, oh man, they're still coming in. Angry plants, this is great. Uh, but Mike is sending something. Um, and uh, we, uh, Ray, you wanted to read the story. You still, you still uh, Ready. there? Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, I think this is gonna get easier for me as I go along, because it's reminding me of what I said. So here we go. Um, wearing her sparkly purple boots, uh, Cynthia Milady was feeling very proud of the fact that she made it all the way down Mulholland Drive without crashing. <laughs> she walked into her ham campaign headquarters with her monkey and for the first time asked the monkey to give the speech in ASL. <laughs> That's when she first noticed that the monkey was Indonesian and didn't know American sign language. Something had to be done. So she jumped into her car and... Headed straight for the ASL interpreter's office. <laughs> Unfortunately... There was no such place in the entire L.A. basin. If only the brownies... Had been magical. <laughs> so ever since then... She drove down Mulholland Drive backwards. Well, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Who else is going to read theirs? Will, I'm going to take that as a hand. Yeah. 
Here we go. You ready? Is that me? No, that's Will. Okay. It's Will. Yeah. Go. Whoever's asking, we can do you next. Um, so, Will, here we go. Uh, uh, Cynthia Milady, wearing her sparkly purple boots, was feeling mighty proud of all that she'd accomplished. She walked into the campaign headquarters with her monkey and for the first time said, you may now address me as mayor of our fine city. <laughs> and that's when she first noticed a staffer with a faux chinchilla wrap. Something mm -hmm. had to be done. So she jumped into her car and drove straight through the wall of the headquarters. <laughs> Unfortunately. Her monkey grabbed the steering wheel and began to try to save everyone. If only the brownies had not opaqued the windshield <laughs> so terribly, perhaps disaster would have been lessened. So ever since then, Mayor Monkey has had a staffer in the pardoned Miss Cynthia Milady. <laughs> 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 so you went back and filled in the incident with the monkey like that it's like the backstory yeah excellent um uh and somebody else i couldn't see who was talking but somebody else was going to read betty? Was, was it betty okay all right betty here we go uh wearing her sparkly purple boots cynthia milady was feeling pretty sassy and chic she walked into the campaign headquarters with her monkey, and for the first time, she could see nobody liked her. That's <laughs> when she noticed everyone had camp pain posters for the monkey. <laughs> Something had to be done. So she she, into her car. she went to Starbucks to sulk. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let her in without a mask. If only the brownies had had marijuana in them. <laughs> so ever since then, she has never run for office. Oh, <laughs> man, a tragedy. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Who else is going to read? Anyone else? Um, uh, I'm having trouble reading this. Leone. Leone? Yeah. All right, here we go. Wearing her sparkly purple boots, Cynthia Milady was feeling as though she owned herself, especially with her purple mini skirt. Uh -huh. She walked into the campaign headquarters with her monkey, and for the first time, she knew she had a chance to win. Um, at least that's what the monkey told her. <laughs> and that's when she noticed that there was no one at the campaign headquarters. She was there all alone. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, she was, she was there all alone and she couldn't figure out where everyone was. Something had to be done. So she jumped into her car and started driving up the wrong way up the one way. Unfortunately, that's, oh, unfortunately, that's um, the monkey got in front of her face and tried to take the wheel from her, and there was almost a collision. If only the brownies weren't left on the dashboard as they were flying all over the place like projectiles. <laughs> Ever since then, she took the subway. <laughs> <laughs> You, you guys have great resolutions. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a lot from these people. Uh, we are uh, uh, not quite ready to send them a, a suggestion yet. So do you want to move on? One more, one more reading? One more reading and then we'll send them one. All right. Okay. Who's going to do this one more reading that's going to take us to suggestion time? Deborah Valpy. Here we go. Wearing her sparkly purple boots, Cynthia Milady was feeling smug about her hot chick factor. She walked into the campaign headquarters with her monkey and for the first time, 
She used that monkey as a dummy. Who knew she was a ventriloquist? That's when she noticed that everyone was paying more attention to that damn monkey than to her. Big whooping <laughs> surprise, silly Sylvia. Sylvia Something had to be done. So she jumped into her car and sped to her mother's house. Mom always knew how to fix things. Unfortunately, Mom had moved again. <laughs> no forwarding address. Cynthia snuck back to campaign headquarters. If only the brownies had done their bit on our workers, it would be party time. So ever since then, Cynthia has operated her own brownie bakery and forgotten about politics. Ah, ah there's, a, there's a resolution as well. Give up politics. <laughs> All right, so here is our next um, um, suggestion going into those people in there. And this is a little crafty, so let's work on this a little bit. I would like to send them a stage direction, which was written for the designers of this play uh, that would cause a, a theatrical uh, effect. So I'm looking for a stage direction. and It could be a costume sort of thing happening or a set thing happening or a lighting thing. A lighting thing. What's that? A lighting thing happening. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and see what this uh, theatrical you effect. something like you know uh, a playwright might write something like the lights slowly fade. It's not a thing that actors do. It's a thing that a designer does. It's something that's done with the lights with the setting. All right. Oh yeah, everybody understood. I didn't need to say that. Yeah. I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> And he sits downstage. <laughs> what are you taking, Mike? Well, I'm looking at these. Uh, 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 a scrape on the dress breaks. What is that? I'm a breaks. A scrap of the dress. Yeah. A scrap. A strap. Okay. A str oh, okay. There we got it. A strap on the on the on the. Uh, on the dress breaks. Oh, that'll be interesting, especially if no one's wearing a dress in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll see what happens there. You are fiendish. <laughs> so they didn't like my trap door opens. <laughs> I did like that one. I did like that oh, one. I, I should put myself on mute. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the single spotlight illuminates the heroine. Well, that's Will's again. Will, I seem to like, I want you to put all of your suggestions together into a play for me. All right. Um, Laura, how much time do they have left? They have, uh, I have that they have like, oh wait, Mike has just given them 15 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, are you ready for another game? This one's going to be kind of similar, except more up to you. Um, so if you could grab a pencil and just make some notes for yourself. Um, this version, this version of the, uh, it's going to be the character game that we did where we made up things about the character, but this one's all by yourself. So grab a pencil and write down the name of your character. Just write a name down for that person. And then write down what they do for a living. and write down uh, something that describes them physically. And write down a dream or a goal or an aspiration that they have. I just read some more of these. They're great. And the last thing, uh, a fear that your character has. Fear? A fear, something that worries them or scares them. And here we go. I'm going to do another version.
version of finish my sentence. It's going to be you finishing my sentence using your character. So this is going to be wilder and even more, more uh, varied. So here we go. Once upon a time, fill in your character and finish that sentence. Joseph? Fill in your character and finish that sentence. Like, like I had, like I would have written once upon a time, Cynthia Milady. But you're going to so, use my character. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll say, if there's anything you don't understand or doesn't work well for you, that's my fault. So just write anything you want. Don't worry if you're doing it right or not. I really have kind of no ideas of what's going on here. Uh, so the next sentence begins every day. And if you could tell us what your character does every day and maybe where they do it, like a setting. Take like 10 more seconds if you need to. Okay, the next sentence starts, but one day Take 10 more seconds if you need it, and then I'm coming back. Here it comes. The next sentence starts, because of that, Five more seconds. The next sentence, which is a different sentence, also starts because of that. Five seconds. This sentence is going to, I mean, this story is going to have three more sentences in it. <clears throat> the next sentence starts because of that. <laughs> Love them repercussions. Five seconds. Second to the last sentence starts. Finally.
five. And the last sentence starts with my favorite, ever since then. Cool, cool. That was a big experiment. I'm I'm <laughs> waiting to see how this turns out. This is uh, fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. Mike, do we need to send something in, or should we read one first? I, I think I think just to make it nice, clean. I think we should uh, nice and clean. We should uh, send them one in now. It's a little early, not too much, and then just have the rest of the time to tell stories. All so, right. so I'm here's the last thing: a character one of the characters in their play is going to start humming a song. What song are they going to be humming? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going with It's a Small World After All. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I got to go with that, but I got to go with that. Okay. <laughs> I, I was oh, just going to type that in again. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I, I Speaking of alternate realities, I wonder if I were taking the suggestion how different the plays would be. Because I, I always go like, oh, 1812 Overture. And then Mike goes, oh, small world. <laughs> Every single time I've gone like, oh, that one. And Mike goes with a different one. It's cool. I enjoy that. I guess I just didn't want to. It, it's a small world is the ultimate earworm exactly exactly like, right like the heroine of earworm songs as if it's not repetitive enough we're going to hear it five times tonight <laughs> <after this. laughs> all right mike we've got some time to read some of these uh these uh, stories we just concocted right right all right so um who wants to read theirs and I think it might be possible to read them without me saying the sentence beginning, but let me know if you want me to. All right, so who's volunteering here? Is there anyone we haven't called on that's gonna go? Looking around, like I'm speaking to John. Um, okay, Mike, you're pointing at people, but they're all in different spots for me now. All right, anyone, anyone's hand up here. Yes, Heidi, let's hear it. You need me to read the beginnings? Or are you just going to go for it? I can just go for it. Okay. Once upon a time, Jeannie Boo Boo sadly walked to work in the rain. She got up late, missed breakfast and her bus. Every day she ate pancakes with her cat and hopped a bus while she read the newspaper on the way to the zoo. But not today. Her alarm didn't go off, most likely because her cat knocked it over. And she was not. She was now hungry and wet. Now, she had to be nice to the tigers at work. But she was still very mad at her cat. Because of it, the tigers may not be happy as they could smell her anger to a cat. Because of that, she would give the tiger extra bunnies to eat so they wouldn't eat her. Finally, she got home. She would try to be nice to her cat named Tiger mm. and put on dry clothes and have pancakes for dinner. Ever since then, Jeannie has used her cell phone as a backup alarm because the tigers at the zoo were getting fat from all the extra bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> so these are like real people. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. non, right. non-professional people. Right. Right. And then they gave information to mm. the people who are professionals and they're supposed to come back, blah, blah, blah. It, so now- That Craig's uh, microphone on there. So I'm still waiting for Craig to come back and do a shtick. All right. 
I'm 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 gonna Mike. Why don't you call on someone and I'm gonna look for that Mike. Well, I, I, I got a I call Valpy down there. I, I, uh, uh, Eric, you're gonna read your story. You bet. All right, let's do that. Once upon a time, Thaddeus Thoreau, sports agent extraordinaire, he had a promising stable of professional athletes under his representation. And every day, Thaddeus would send personal messages to each and every one of his clients with notes of encouragement and familial inquiry. <laughs> but one day, his messages began to get rejected by junk mail filters, <laughs> unbeknownst to him. Because of that, his clients seemed to no longer perform as well, and, and they, their team started to suffer and they would get cut. New clients would no longer be calling from the word of mouth recognition. And Thaddeus fell into a kind of depression he had no framework for or experience to relate to. Because of that, he languished for years with an unclear, looming sense of failure. <laughs> Finally, he closed up shop and went to sail across Greenland on an ice sled. Finally, he crashed into a cavasse alone and was never found. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait for the movie. I can't wait for the movie. <laughs> Listen, I got to get these. I got to. I have to make these people come back pretty soon. Uh huh. Yeah. I have. So uh, I would love to hear more of these stories, though. Okay. But I think we, well, have the we have the opportunity, don't we? Yes, yes. What we're going to do now, folks, um, is is we're getting the uh, playwrights back because they've run out of time. So we're getting them back, and uh, we'll go to intermission soon, and then they will we'll hear this, the the plays that they've written based on your suggestion. But um, I would like to hear more of these. So at the end of the show, we have a talk back. If you want to hang around for that to, to read the story you just wrote, that would be awesome. Uh, uh, and we'll, we'll uh, hear some more then. But for now, back from our writers. Can I ask everybody to turn their videos and their uh, microphones off now? Yeah. So that so that we can welcome back our writers. We can keep track of our, our the playwrights here. And um, while they're gathering, I I put in the uh, chat. I put in um, the uh, website of both of our theater companies, Freestyle Rep and Synergy Theater. In case during intermission you want to go there, check us out, make a donation, um, uh, sign up for uh, the next one coming up. Uh, and I've also put in um, a little uh, link to right away afterwards, which is our, our Facebook group just for people who have participated in, um, in right away. But I'll tell you more about that right now. We, we seem to have lost three of our playwrights. Yeah, uh -oh. just two of our playwrights. All right, there's I'm just back. yeah that valves is that valves is always she always takes an extra ten five, ten seconds or so, and and Lisa Thompson, I'm, I'm gonna make there she is there she is I said you come oh, back it's right Lisa now. we're missing now now we're missing Lisa but uh, uh, here's what I'm gonna say to uh, everybody out there who's with us and I'm what a fun first act we had thank you very much you guys are a lot of fun a great first act. So what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to uh, take a 10 minute intermission. And during that intermission, the uh, uh, playwrights are going to cast their shows and send around all uh, through the wonderful world of interwebs, uh, all the scripts. Uh, so uh, in, uh, um, you have 10 minutes to do whatever functions you might want to do in a typical 10 minute intermission, or you can stay and watch us freak out and figure out what the hell's going on here, uh, which is always kind of fun anyway. So here's my, um, here's my thing here is I want you all to know that I would like you to be back here at 835. 835 is when we will be getting the second act or 35 minutes past whatever hour is coming up next to you wherever you are that's correct that's correct i'm so presumptuous because i'm a new yorker <laughs> uh have a wonderful intermission we'll see you in 10 minutes thanks very much a great time all right so 
Uh, hi, hello, everybody. I hope hello. It, we had a good first act here. Um, <laughs> why don't we? Go, why don't we just start out with people saying who they're going to be asked? So why don't we start with Cat? Who's in your show? All right. If I could have uh, Laura Valpy playing Casey and Laura Livingston playing Mother. Okay. Right. Mither, mither. Uh, I'm going to say, Ken, I'm going to save you for last, I think. Uh, 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 Lisa, let's go with Lisa. Oh, Laura. I'm sorry, Laura, do you want to go in an order? Am I out of? You did, I mean, just right now, we're just going to ask okay. who people Lisa. Have, you know what to look for. And then, Lisa, who's in your cast? Mike, you're in my cast. I am. Or the captain. And Kat, uh -huh. uh, um, would you play Geneva? Yes. And, um, Valpy, will you play uh, a voice over the loudspeaker and the mule? <laughs> uh, Craig, what's your uh, what's your number there? Uh, Mike, uh, you were in it as Detective Mike Spade. Uh, ah. uh, Valpy uh, will be uh, Laura Fatal. And Ken, if you would be Ken Cairo, a Peter Laurie type. <laughs> I want to read this one right away. Okay, I'm in it. Uh, Valps, what do you, what do you, to, to help people remember which character they're playing. <laughs> Valps, what do you got for us? Um, Lisa, will you read Sheila? And Craig, will you read Kevin? Kevin, sure. That's it? Two people? Yeah, just two. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and Ken, here we go. All right. So, Michael Durkin, you are the mortician. Uh huh. Craig, you are the fish thrower. Fish. Laura Valpy, you are the ice fisher person. Livingston, you are the wedding planner. Kat, you are the tiger wrangler. And Lisa, you are the barber. And concerning the genders, Michael Durkin and Craig, the mortician and the fish thrower, are men. Everyone else, in my mind, some were men and some were women. I forgot, honestly, who, what genders I had available. But don't play it as a different gender. It, it, I, try, I think it's vague enough that you can just play it as yourself and we'll see what happens. Just read it as it is and let the audience make of your gender what they will. But don't try to take on a different gender. All, All right. right, let's fire up these scripts, right? Gender's complex enough without, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> All right. But, and so, what's the YouTube link that people can watch on? Uh, it's Synergy Theater's YouTube channel. If you just go to YouTube and search for Synergy Theater. And we are rolling now, everybody. Please remember that. We are on YouTube right now. All right, yeah, so watch your language. Okay, yeah. did, I, did I say something? No, no, no. I'm just reminding. Oh, cool. So, Sometimes you know, nobody. Go ahead and send those. Um, and uh, we're coming back at 35 minutes after, right? You said, Mike? That's yeah. right. That's right. 25 minutes to or 35 minutes after. I the have, big dollhouse. I have 28 after right now. What did you say, Mike? Uh, I just, the big dollhouse is Craig's play. Oh, okay. Um, just big doll, no house. Oh, the big dog. <laughs> All right. I was going to get an Ibsen y. All right. Not Ibsen. <laughs> Wrong genre. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I'm going to download that. Um, Mike, did you have an order you wanted to go in? Is that I did not. I did not. I was just yeah, using the time I thought was. Uh... Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll just paste up the order yeah. that I wrote ahead of time, which was the order that I'll. Um, that I called people in. So folks, I'm putting in the chat, the order that we'll read them in, because I know I need that, because I got to prepare. Lisa. How about that? Oh, I got I got something to say, but uh, I came across the cutting cappuccino mm. script the other day. I love that play. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, it was a good one. It was. Uh, I've only really got good. Craig's play so far. Mine's oh, no, coming. You, you should have mine. Uh, cat, I don't have yours. Mm -hmm. I got your cat. My word is not responding. Oh, wait. Maybe it's coming back. Can it I says it sent to you, can. Laura. Yeah, I'm looking for Ken's. All right, I just sent mine out. Okay. Hey, Mike, could you forward me Kath again? Uh, I can do that, I think. Let me give that a shot. <clears throat> How am I going to do that? Right, I can on. forward it to you again, Laura. I'll send okay, it to you. yeah, would you? Because I've got Craig's and Lisa's, and that's it. That is but weird. Yeah, because it's with. Uh, yeah, it's right the, in that chain. Yeah. Uh, you're living Dirk. At AOL. At AOL. Right. I also don't have Ken's yet. I will refresh Did it. Did anybody get mine? I got yours, Ken. Got yours. Yeah, I have everybody's that. In fact, I have everybody's, period. And if if I can help, Laura, I'll... I got cats. I got cans. Yahoo. You cat? Do you have cats? I have cats and cans, and those are the ones I'm in. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Yahoo. Now, this is the point where I get kind of goofy, because I all of a sudden I can't get stuff when I want it. So I think I'm Justin Craig's. Is that right? Uh, yes. All right. Did you guys get mine? Who's talking? Yeah, Val. uh, Valpy. Oh, uh, I got Valpy's. I got yours. Okay. I don't have Ken's. Valpy, you said you wanted me to play Kevin. Yes, please. <laughs> but I don't see a Kevin in your unless he comes in a lot later. Am I looking at the right thing? Flight attendants or is No, that you're not. I sent you the complete last... wrong thing. Ignore my play. I <laughs> ignore it completely. Will do. Oh. Leave it in. Get mine yet? There's the one. You know what I clicked on last last week's rehearsal? I clicked oh. Delphi's play to add to attach. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Ken, we I got yours, Ken. I'm really glad you asked about that. I was like, um what? And I got it. I'm really glad you, you got, got it. it. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. All right. All right, so if I go... Okay. If I go there, that's where that... Oh, my be. gosh. Sorry about that. <laughs> I put that's a, Valpy. that's okay. a good one, though. That would be a good one. I like that. Okay, so it says Valpy's play, A Stone's Throw. Oh, and it's it's uploading. My thing is uploading, so, you know. Three minutes. In three minutes, you should get it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Chat. My experiment uh, with using two different computers. Wait, did Ken's come through? Come on. I thought I had Ken's, but. Should I send mine again? I, I have it. And no, Ken's... I saw it, but yeah, please, to me at any rate. Ken's came with Valpies and Lisa's and everybody else. But, but ignore the first one I sent you. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. It's, it says Valpy's play, A Stone's Throw. Now it says it finally sent. So hopefully it actually came through. Thanks for that catch, Craig. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Big down is Craig. Big down. How much time? Two minutes. Thank you, too. Got it. Org. You're C-R-A-I-G-A-P at yahoo.com, right? Yes, I think I got it this time. All right, I just sent it again to you. It's it. I got, I got Laura's. From you, I got a message that says you are offline. So I don't know what that... <laughs> Hold on. Got it. All right. Does everybody have mine now? Yes. I do. Okay. All right, we are one minute. Thank you, Warren. Oh. 
Oh, gee. And I'm, I gotta say something, right? Or, uh, yeah. I talk first. Oh, good. What's the order? Uh, I put it in chat. Uh, and oh, I just chat. closed chat, which was dumb because I got to go in that order. Thanks for saying that, Craig. Sure. It's Cat, Ken, Lisa, Lisa, Laura, Craig. Cat, Ken, Ken Lisa, 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 Laura, Craig. Craig. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. And did you type in the uh, Synergy Theater in Freestyle I did. Rep? I did. You did. Oh, good. Okay. All, All right. right. So, audience, are you there? Come back. Come back. If you're in the kitchen getting refreshments, bring them in back into the theater. And uh, while you're gathering, uh, let me invite you to join our Facebook page uh, right away afterwards, which is we created for people who've been part of right away, only people who can be in it. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to continue a conversation from tonight or just talk about writing in general. That's where we, it's kind of like the after party after the after party. Um, so I'm hoping people are back. I'm, uh, I'm trusting that you are. And uh, I'm ready to hear some, um, some uh, world premieres here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's, let's real quickly, we're going to review uh, the wonderful suggestions that the wonderful audience who we assume is out there, uh, which we gave to our playwrights while they were writing. And here are the four um, uh, uh, suggestions we gave them. Uh, the first one was a sound, and that sound was a braying mule. The second was a, a monologue, a monologue about brushing teeth. Uh, the third was a uh, sort of a, um, a, 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 a theatrical sort of set sort of costume sort of uh, lighting effect. And what happened was a strap of a, a character's dress breaks. So that was the that was the theatrical kind of thing. And the very the final one was, uh, oh, I forget. Uh, I can't remember the last one. I can't remember the last one, but they had something to do with humming. It had something to do with. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We got it. We got it. Okay, all right, all right. So now, without further ado, I think we are going to hear from uh, Schenectady, New York. And uh, Miss Kat Coppett, will you please introduce your play, uh, whatever stage directions, and you know the routine. And here, I think we go, right? Yes. Have a good one. Uh, my suggestion was, Are You My Mother? Which is also the name of this play. And I will read stage directions for you two. And here we go. Scene opens on a suburban bedroom, pink with a canopy bed. A suitcase is open on the bed, a trunk is open on the floor. Casey is sorting through papers and trinkets at a white roll top desk in the corner. Casey's mom is taking clothes from the closet. She holds up a sundress for Casey to see. Are you my mother? What? I think it's lovely. Have you paid any attention to anything I've worn since I was like eight? You love the color yellow. It's your favorite color. Was my favorite color for like five minutes, like 10 years ago or something. So give it away? Yeah. She goes back to sorting through stuff on her desk. Her mother puts the dress in a pile at the foot of the bed and goes back to the closet. She starts organizing the clothes inside the closet by type rather than show them one by one to Casey. So, sweetie, I was looking at that postcard you got from the school, and it sounds like the orientation week is, do, is going to be so much fun. Mm. I wonder which activities you'll choose to attend. There'll be so many. I bet it'll be really hard to decide. Casey picks up a little elect electronic toy from the desk that makes sound effects. She hits the buzzer sound. Mm. Oh, I... Uh, Oh, well, does that mean something? Doesn't the orientation sound fun to you? Casey hits the button again and we hear a raspberry sound. Now, Casey, stop that. 
I'm, I'm not sure why you're being so ill-tempered. My goodness, it's as if you're just stubbornly saying no to everything I say, just for the sake of it. Stop it. If you're going to call me a mule, I might as well sound like one. Oh, Casey, I don't want to fight. Can't we just get along this once? Before you know it, you'll be gone and on your own. Won't you want to look back on this time as a sweet mother-daughter bonding? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, great. She pulls out a whole stack of outfits from the closet, holding them up one by one. What about this? Give away. Okay. How about this? It's got a beautiful neckline. Give away. Um, fine. How about this nice dress that my mother- Give away. This jumps. Give away. Casey, you don't like any of these beautiful clothes? Are you even my mother? Do you even know who your daughter is? What are you talking about? When was the last time you looked at me? Have you ever seen me wear any of those clothes? Oh, well, I... Let's play it back. Mother, do you see me go off to school? No, I always... I'm not asking if you mean to or apologize after. I'm asking if you see me before I go off to school. If the answer is no. You're at your computer. And do you see me before bed? I always make sure you're yes, you always make sure I brush my teeth, brush your teeth. You say, make sure you brush your teeth, brushy, brushy, gushy, gushy, makes your mouth so clean, brushy, brushy, gushy, gushy, get the in between. I love you. You love that song. That's your song. You made it up. When I was four, I'm 18, but you don't see me. You're on the phone or busy writing. Mom, you have no idea who I am, what I do, what I like. Ever since you started your company, you have no idea who I am. And frankly, I have no idea who you are either. Are you even my mother? What about this one? No, mom. Casey snatches it from her mother. The strap breaks and mom is left holding a bro broken hanger. Casey holding a torn dress. I hate all these dresses. I don't wear dresses. I started my company to be a role model for you. I hated my mother because all she did was stay home and take care of me and Aunt Molly. And it was so fucking suffocating. And I thought she was such a twit. Huh. And now I guess you hate me because I worked. This is such a boring cliche. Aren't we past this by now? I think you're right. Well, that's new. I think it is cliche, and I think we should be past it. Plenty of moms work and also know what their daughter's like. Oh. But I don't hate you. You don't? No. I guess everything is a cliche, really, right? Like, my mom doesn't understand me. Sheesh, tell me now. Does this mean we're making up? Mom, do not sing that song. 
It's a small world after all. I hate that song. You love this song. Come on. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small world. And Kurt. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Bert. Nice. That was awesome. Yay. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice, Pat. Aww. <laughs> Lovely reading. Thank you. Hey, you know, hey you know, so sweet. I uh, back. Um, uh, I I forgot to to invite everyone in the audience to pop on at the end. If you want to pop on and clap for, I see people in the chat are writing Bravo and great and everything. If you want to. <laughs> Spring your camera back on anyone and, and uh, give a round to the. We always love applause. We hmm. always love applause. Uh, I think we're, uh, I think what's up now. Thank you. There you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Everybody. Uh, I think now we go on to Mr. Ken Adams, I believe. All right. So I asked for um, a couple of professions. I got mortician, ice fisher person, wedding planner. Tiger Wrangler, uh, Barber, and Fish Thrower. And as I said, this is written in the style of a La Ronde. You'll see what it is now, so I won't explain it again. Um, I, 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 will, I will read stage directions, and also in between each scene, I will read the new scene introduction. So it'll say scene one, and then the two people who are in it, and scene two, and then the two people who are in it. So I will actually read that like a line of dialogue, and then when you're on screen, you're on screen. When you're off screen, you're off screen. Sounds All good. right, then. My friends, the world debut of Ken Adams, Laurent. <laughs> Scene one, the ice fisher and the mortician. The ice fisher is fishing in a hole on the ice. The mortician enters. Dead. I'm sorry? No. No. I suppose you're not. Not what? Dead? That's right. I'm sorry, but I thought you were dead. Why would you think I was dead? Well, just look at yourself. You're sitting out here in the middle of a frozen tundra on a lake of ice, a lake of ice. You weren't moving. There's frost in your beard. Your eyes are glazed. You just look dead. Well, how would you know what a dead person looks like? I'm a mortician! It's what I do! Knowing what dead people look like is what you do? Eh, it's a good living. Everybody dies. Yeah, well... No, I'm not dead. I'm fishing. Fishing? Yeah, I'm fishing. I'm, I'm an ice fisher person. I see. Well, I'm sorry, but you look dead. Well, to tell you the truth, it does get kind of boring out here. I spend my time alone, and to be honest, I very rarely catch a fish. Sometimes I think I just stay out here to avoid the real world. You know what I mean? Avoid other people. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't have anything to do for a little while. How about if I take over your fishing hole for you and you go back on into town and see if you like it? If not, you can always come back here. You'd do that for me? What the hell? Sure. Thanks, Mortician. I'll take you up on it. Scene two, the ice fisher person and the wedding planner. But I thought you were a wedding planner. I am. Then plan me a wedding. But it doesn't work like that. You have to have someone to marry before I can plan the wedding. I thought that's part of your job. You're a wedding planner, right? Planner, yes. But I plan the party. I don't find the bride or the groom. Oh, I see. Well. <laughs> I guess I'm embarrassed. 
um, don't be, you'd be surprised how many people make the same mistake. Really? Well, no, but I, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. I knew that I shouldn't have left the ice. I come all the way out here from the ice to see if I can make it in the real world. And I'm met with setback and disappointment. You're not as alone as you think. Here I am, a wedding planner. But, you know, always the planner, never the bride. Do you want to get married? Do you? Yes, to me. The sound of a brain mule occurs. Oh, God, the mule. That means my boyfriend is near. He's a tiger wrangler, but he took on the mule for a friend. It's causing all sorts of trouble with the tigers. Oh, your boyfriend? Yes, but I, I like you much better. Yes, yes, I'll marry you. Scene three, the wedding planner and the tiger wrangler. I don't understand, you're leaving me? Yes, I'm getting married to an ice fisher. She came into my shop today. I fell in love. How could you leave me now? How could you kick me while I'm down? Business is in the dumps. I'm taking on mules for God's sake. How could you leave me? I'm tired of planning everybody else's wedding. If you want me, then marry me. That's very traditional. I am traditional. I'm sorry. I should have known better than to get involved with a tiger wrangler. You're wild. You're untamed. You're, you're savage. You're not the kind of guy to settle down and raise a family. But I love you. You do? Yes. Then prove it. How? I told you. Marry me. But, but... Uh... I, I knew it. Goodbye. Scene four, the tiger wrangler and the barber. Off, cut the whole thing off. But your hair, how can you? You're the tiger wrangler and this is your mane. I'm done. I can't be a wild animal any longer. I want to be a man, a real man who's mature enough to settle down and marry. Why? Because that's what grown-ups do, isn't it? I don't know, but you shouldn't get married if you don't really want to. But I love her. So what? Look at your mule out there with the tigers. Yeah. You see how the mule keeps looking at the tiger by the tree? Yeah. The mule's in love. That mule wants to mate with that tiger. It does. Yes. How do you know? I'm a barber. Right. But that tiger knows that it isn't interested in mating with that mule. They're too different. Oh. They wouldn't really make each other happy. Got it. So, do I cut the hair? No. Scene five, the barber and the fish thrower at the fish market. I'll take a carp. Carp! The fish thrower throws the carp. And a bass. Bass! The fish thrower throws the bass. You know what, Barber? I woke up this morning and I said, no, no. Today I will not brush my teeth. Do you know why? I will tell you. Because every day I wake up and I brush my teeth. Then I come here to the fish market and I throw fish. And today in the morning, I start thinking, do the fish care at all if I brush my teeth? No, they are dead. They cannot smell my breath, but the customers, do the customers care if I brush my teeth at all? No, I throw fish to my customers and they are so far away they cannot smell my breath. But what about me? Do I care if I do not brush my teeth? No. I have grown so used to the stench of my breath that I do not care. So for what am I brushing my teeth? And so today, I did not brush. I am just as happy as any other day that I brushed. I like that. You are your own person. You do not care what other people think about you. And nobody should. And yet I do. And yesterday, 
I ruined a man's life because of it. You did? Yes. I told the tiger wrangler that, I, that he should not cut his hair and not get married to the woman that he loves. Why did you do this? Because I wanted him to think I was wise. To tell the truth, I did not really have an opinion one way or another about whether he got married or cut his hair. In fact, I wanted him to cut his hair because then I would have gotten paid for the haircut. But instead, I wanted him to think I was wise. And so Salmon. I told him not to do it. Salmon. Yes, I am a salmon. No, no, I just threw a salmon to another customer. I'm sorry, please go on. How many lives have been ruined because of what we want people to think of us? I know of 12. Yes, there are 12 at least. Oh, what a fool I am. How dare I interfere with the happiness of another man? And how dare I rob that woman, whoever she was, of chance at happiness just so I could make myself look wise in the eyes of another. How far the ripples of each stone we cast in the sea. Pike. Did you throw a pike? No, I am calling you a pike. Why? Because it rhymes with spike and you are sharp and you have made me see the light. I have? Yes, I must go. <laughs> well, that strap underneath your fish smock it is just broken. Yes. And what a divine coincidence that it should break at this moment. Scene six, the fish thrower and the mortician. You came this far, all the way to this frozen tundra, just to get away from me? Yes, I was upset. I knew that you did not have to come this far just to look for dead people. I know that you knew, but you do not love me and I was angry. I do love you. Then why do you hide who you really are from me? Because I have been a fool. But look, yesterday at the fish market, the strap of my dress broke. You mean that dress that you hid underneath your fish smock? because you are embarrassed to show the world who you really are. Yes, I am a woman, I am really? a woman, but I know that the world would rather me be a man and so I hid who I am. But yesterday when the strap of my dress broke, it was as if the dress itself was rebelling against my shame. It wanted to break free, it wanted the world to know. Yes, yes. The world should know that you are a beautiful woman. I am a beautiful woman, and I want all the world to know. I no longer care what they think of me. My darling. My love. I was a fool to hide my true self. We should all be what we are. We should all allow others to be what they are. And what I am is a woman in love. A woman in love with you. They embrace. Come. My darling, let us go into the igloo and take off your dress. Yes, my love, let us go. You know what else, my love? What, my darling? I am going to close up this ice hole so that the ice fisher can never come back. No one should know, no one should spend their life alone on the ice. Come, my darling. Yes. The world is, is too small for people to live so far apart. They go into the igloo. End of play. <laughs> mm. You guys are thank you. Wow. Ken, that was awesome. <laughs> that Thank was you quite so the undertaking. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Oh, all right. Man. Why is it my camera icon is always underneath something when I need it? During I know, I know the panic of that. <laughs> like fighting to find it. Nice. Uh, our good friend Lisa has a, has a play now. 
that we're going to to uh, to read. So, uh, Lisa, are you all ready to do this? Am I all ready to do it? My suggestions were uh, science fiction as a genre and ennui. Uh, the play I've written is called One Cappuccino Short of a Reason to Live. And a uh, note to uh, the actors, I didn't get the last uh, suggestion, but okay. feel free to hum uh, It's a Small World. <laughs> and I'll read, uh, if there are any, yeah, if there's anything to read, I'll read it. It may not, uh, there may not be. Okay. All right. Um, uh, I'm having a little bit of, but I think I'm there. Am I, am I on screen? Mm -hmm. You are. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Ready, get set? Yep. La -di -da. Captain. Yada, yada, yada. Come on, Captain. I need you to sit up and pay attention now. Oh, ho oh, hum, fiddle -dee. Captain, we are hurtling at Zor billion miles an hour toward the surface of planet Medusa. The engine thrust is locked in space. The entire crew is sick with some kind of alien dysentery, and the cap cappuccino machine is broken. If there was ever a time we needed our captain, this is it. Oh, why didn't you say so? I've been trying to tell you. The cappuccino machine is broken? I'll take it. Yes, Captain, please rouse yourself out of this daze and save us from a future, maybe a short one, without cappuccino. Have you tried unplugging and plugging it back in? Uh, no, actually, we were focusing on the space drive problem. We have approximately three minutes to until impact, Captain. Ah, well, that's usually what it is. Unless somebody let the water reservoir run dry. Sometimes it goes down uh, faster than you think. All right, we'll get someone on that, Captain. How about the space drive? You know, I, I've been lying here thinking, McCormick, for days now, and I just can't find the answer to the, you know, the pickle I feel we're in. Pickle, sir? Well, what does it all mean? Well, I mean why, why are we here? Who am I? What's the point? Oh, snap. You're not watching old Green Acres episodes again, are you? Ah, Green Acres is the place for me. Farm living is the life I need. Take Manhattan and give me the countryside. Give me your rayon tablet form, sir. We talked about this. That show doesn't help your overall disposition. They were a mismatched couple. Doomed from the start. He wanted the country. She wanted the glamorous life of the city. Sir, you know that was just make-believe. You have a very real and very important job. You are responsible for the lives of hundreds of people and a ship worth a trillion dollars. Eh, it just seems so frivolous. Can I remind you of our mission, sir? La -di -da -di -da -di -da. Our mission is to seek out life in other galaxies, to spread peace and knowledge, to share the enlightenment that thousands of years of culture have brought to humans. Culture, schmulture, just what is this enlightenment? I'm not feeling it. Captain, I'm your second in command, but also your friend, right? Yeah. I, I think I know what this is about. You haven't brushed your teeth in at least a week. I can tell from here. But the last time I saw you brushing them, I saw what pictures you were bringing up on your mirror screen. You were looking at pictures of your late wife, and today, if I'm not mistaken, is the anniversary of her death. Lorna would have wanted you to carry on. She would have wanted you to wake up every day and brush those teeth. She would want you to gargle with mouthwash as well. But, but seriously, sir, don't forget that your Lorna was my best friend. Don't you think I want to lay down and die or watch old episodes of Green Acres whenever I think of losing her? You bet I do. But I reach way down deep inside and I ask myself, what would Lorna have me do? And I know right now she'd want us to get up Put aside the questions that plague us in the dark of night and save this crew and this ship. I guess you're right. Here's your cappuccino. You were right. I let it run out of water. Now, about our broken space drive? Ah, Geneva. I'm attracted to you, too, but uh, but th maybe this isn't the time. Oh, oh, no. Uh, the strap on my dress broke. <laughs> Wait, you're attracted to me? I thought you knew. Ten seconds to impact. Nine. Eight. 
Have you ever tried unplugging and plugging it back in? Doing it now, sir. Three seconds. Geneva seconds. Impact avoided. Captain, you did it. Ha! That was exhilarating. Man, I do I feel alive. Geneva, come on over here and let me show you how I feel. Oh, Captain, my Captain. It's a small mm. world after <laughs> all. End of play. <laughs> uh, we're getting crazier. Is it getting later in the day? Is it getting later now? I think it's getting later. That was so fun, Lisa. That was so fun. I guess it's not so hard to work that last one in there, is it? <laughs> So, so great. And it'll be it'll be with us for about four or five more hours too. Yeah, thanks, thanks whoever gave that suggestion. Uh, and listen, Miss Valby, have you got? A, yeah. did, did you write a play for us tonight? I did. Um, oh, I may have responded to last week's email chain, so make sure that you open up my play that says Valby's play, A Stone's Throw. You might need to just search for me. I might be in last week's email chain. I got it. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. I'm looking forward to now. You're, you're in her play, aren't you, Mike? No, I don't think so. No, I've got a oh, Craig okay. and Lisa, please. All right, I'm turning off my microphone. <laughs> um, wait, I'm not muted, right? Okay, I guess I'll do a quick little setup when make sure Craig and Lisa are ready. Um. I mean, my setup is just that my suggestion was stones, and I've titled this A Stone's Throw. Um, Craig and Lisa, are you guys ready? Again, I'm with my phone. I can't see everybody. I'm ready. You guys ready? Okay, awesome. All right, here we go. A Stone's Throw. Turn off my video. There we go. Kevin and Sheila are, are on a driftwood strewn beach on the Puget Sound. Kevin is skipping stones. Sheila teases the freezing cold water with her toes. Oh, did you see that one, Shields? Did you see that one? Six or seven skips, maybe eight. Hmm. Oh, here's a good one. Smooth and flat. Good weight to it though. Sheila? Hmm. What? No comment? No, just like your women. Huh? What? You missed your chance. I left the door wide open for that one, too. Smooth and flat, hefty weight. You're lost. He resumes skipping his stones. <laughs> what? What is that? That is the sound of a braying mule. A what? <laughs> I'll do it again. Okay. Why the hell are you making the sound of a braying mule? The way you like your women. <laughs> oh, burn. I ought to toss you in the... <sighs> yeah, I'd like to see you try. I'll skip you from here to... Whatever island that one is. Well, whatever it is, take a good last look. God, I'm going to miss this place. Yeah, yeah. You done? We should get going. Kevin looks at the handful of skipping rocks he's still holding. Just these when I'm done with these. He studies one and then gives it a throw. Not bad. Picks another. Takes a little longer with it before he throws it. Come on, Kev. It's time. It would be just like you to miss your plane. Kevin studies his second to last stone. Hey, did I ever tell you about the one time I flew first class? Incessantly, you dumb lug nut. You want to rub that in my face again? No, no, but the, the dop kit they gave me. Did I ever tell you about that? No, what about it? 
So they gave me this dop kit, you know, with all the travel size toiletries, you know, little sleeping mask and socks and like the kind they give you at a hospital. Like, anyway, there was th this teeny little toothbrush and toothpaste in there. So I'm here I am thinking, well, hell yeah, I'm going to take advantage of it and actually use this stuff, right? Great. Now skip your rock and let's go. I, I will, I will, but hold on. It, it, unless you're flying first class again today, Kev, um, sorry to say you're going to have a long ass security line just like the rest of the peons. No, but, but this little toothbrush and toothpaste, right? So I get up to use the restroom. The first class lavatory? Mm -hmm. To go brush my teeth. I use the sink in there and I brush my teeth. But when I come out, the flight attendant, I don't know, she sees me holding the little toothbrush and, and he says, you didn't brush your teeth using that water, did you? Like all aghast. And I said, well, yeah, I, I did. And he said, that's the non-potable water, sir. You shouldn't use that too and blah, 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 blah. Have so what? You used the water. You didn't get sick, did you? No, I didn't. So what's your point? <sighs> my, my point is that here I was with everything I could need or want, and I wasn't supposed to, you know, use it. I, I had it, but I couldn't actually have it. Skip your stone, Kevin. Skip your last stone. I, no. I don't want to. Then I'll skip it for you. She lunges at him and wrestles to get the rock out of his hand. They scuffle. In the fight, a strap of Sheila's dress breaks. She quickly covers herself and turns oh. away. Ah, uh, shit. I'm sorry, Shields. You okay? Sheila turns back around, revealing that she's holding Kevin's last stone. You missed your chance, Kevin. I left the door wide open for you, but it's too late now. She throws the stone as high and as far as she can. Thunk. It's time to go. They hum it's a small world as they walk to the car. End of play. Well, after all, it's a small world. It's a small world. Is that a Puget sound for my PNW crew? <laughs> Excellent, excellent. We have one more, Craig. We got yours, but, but before we uh, before we launch into Craig's play, which is going to be a fun one as well, uh, I just want to remind everybody out there that after we're done with uh, the readings uh, and we kind of sign off, and you want to take off, that's that's great. Take off. We will all hang around for a while just to you know share some of the stuff that went on while we were writing and and uh, and maybe do a, a four or five part uh, uh, harmony with uh, is a small world which you might want to hang around for uh, but so you you're more than welcome to and you're more than afterwards, welcome to be... not now don't go no, now no 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 afterwards yeah 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 afterwards uh, uh, but uh, you know join us we uh, we just sit around kind of chew the fat but in the meantime uh, here we go to Mr. Uh, uh, to Craig's uh, 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 play. We'll call it a play. We we'll call it a play. <laughs> I'm just panicking here because I, I so I uh, I asked for a genre and a location, and selected from the choices noir and Budapest, and so here in the Big Doll, we find ourselves on a darkened street in Budapest. Private Dick Mike Spade enters wearing a trench coat with the fedora pulled low over his brow and a cigarette burning in his mouth. He speaks to the audience. It was midnight in Budapest. I didn't know, I didn't really know what brought me here. It wasn't really my idea. But I was on the case. And sometimes a case will take you places you never thought you'd go otherwise. It all started when this dame came into my office in Sonoma. Laura Fatal appears. Mr. Spade? Depends. On what? On which, Mr. Spade, you're looking for? Is there more than one? There's lots of them. 
in this office? No, no. In this office, it's just me. Then I'm looking for you. Then I guess you found me. Maybe you should be a detective. I wonder if I'm in the right place. <laughs> that all depends on what you're looking for. I'm looking for a private dick. Then you in the right place. Do you get much business this way? No, not really. So, what can I do for you? I think my life is in danger. Yeah, why is that? There's a man who's been following me. Well, you're a pretty good-looking dame. Really? That's where you're going with this? No, you're right. I'm sorry. Of course I have it. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't always the cultured, sophisticated man you see before you. I grew up on a farm. <coughs> so do you know what? Do uh, you have any idea what this man's been following you? Why? It's dark out. I haven't seen his face, but I've been getting strange phone calls at all hours from a man with a Hungarian accent. That's very specific. I grew up in Budapest. So, this could be someone from your past. That's what I need you to find out. Well, you haven't given me a lot to go on. In fact, you haven't even told me your name. It's Fatal. Laura Fatal. I need protection. I have to go back to Hungary. I left something there. Something valuable. How valuable? Enough for you to get out of this dump and retire to that farm you grew up on. Okay, when do we leave? Laura disappears and Mike is back on the street in Budapest. And that's how I found myself on the wrong side of the Danube in the middle of the night. On my way across the Atlantic, Miss Fatal told me that her family had been wealthy before the war. When the Nazis rolled through Europe, her parents hid a handful of diamonds and rubies. Inside of Russian Matryoshka dolls. There's got to be hundreds of those in Budapest alone. Those were very special dolls. My father was a dentist, and he had a local artisan make him special Matryoshka dolls with all the figures brushing their teeth. He was always very careful to teach all his children about the importance of keeping our teeth clean and caring for the health of our gums. The last thing he said to me was, Please, rinse your mouth out and spit. Uh, uh, oh, okay, all right, okay. So where do we look for this doll? A small wiry man appears from the shadows. Does a very good Peter Lorre impression. Ah, oh, perhaps I can be of assistance. Oh. You? Yes. <laughs> It was you following me. It was me following you. I should have known it was you. You should have known it was me. You. Hey. What? Somebody want to introduce me? Ken Cairo. How do you do? And how does it feel? How does it? How does he? How does he fit into this mystery of the missing Maratreshka? He must have been the one who stole it. You must have been the one who stole it. Mm. It was mine. It was mine. They throw themselves at each other, kicking, hitting. A strap on Fatal's dress breaks. Mike pulls them apart. All right, all right. Knock it off. We don't need to start another war here. Why would Mr. Cairo here have your doll? Why wouldn't I? It was filled with my father's precious gems. I thought it was filled with your father's gems. It was. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Are you two related? Ah, you're very astute. I wasn't sure what astute meant, but I wasn't going to let him insult me like that. Mike slugs Ken, knocking him down. <laughs> Laura quickly rifles through his belongings, and in a bag she finds the Matryoshka doll. We found it. It's mine. Why would he be following you if he had it? 
The doll opens, nothing but small rocks and pebbles pour out. I've been tracking Matryoshka dolls all over Europe. I heard of another one in Prague. That's where I'll go next. I'll go with you. None of this makes one damn bit of sense. No, but we go on. Yes, come with us, Mr. Spade. I was stuck on the wrong side of the Danube after midnight and... Uh, hell, all right. I've got nothing to do. They set the Matryoshka dolls in a diminishing row on the stage and exit, humming. Boy, enough. Enough of that. Enough of that. If people want to hear us do the whole thing, we'll do it later. Good oh, job. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun and a half. Oh, man. Oh, All like, right. Yay. I thought the stage directions were read very dramatically, too. Well, thank you. <laughs> well as I say, uh, that uh, there will be a short tap back afterwards. Um, I, I, I also, I, I want to say that... Uh, uh, it's it's just great to have you people come, uh, you know, all of our friends here come and, and participate with us tonight. And it's always wonderful to, that you guys are part of the show and and, and that you take a risk uh, uh, and, and you contribute to our plays. Uh, this last year has been a very challenging year for everyone. Uh, we've all sought ways to uh, maintain our intellectual e equilibrium, our physical vitality, our, our spiritual determination. Uh, and those of us who were performing in the performing arts, we originally we suffered a loss, uh, that loss of entertaining and, and enlightening our, our, our devoted audience. But we found a way. We found a way to reimagine that very vital um, interaction. And, and we want to thank you. Uh, and, and you thanked us very generously by contributing to our organizations so that we can continue the week that we love to do so much and that hopefully you love to, to be a part of. So should you like to make any contributions to our organizations, to uh, Synergy Theater or, or Freestyle Rep on the website, uh, you can go to our websites. They've been put into the chat. Uh, and if you want to make a contribution um, to our organizations, that would be just great. Thank you very much. And the work goes on. Because uh, in a month, uh, we'll be celebrating our first year anniversary uh, with a performance uh, next month. It's May 24th, uh, 2021. And as always, you can register and should register now. You can do that on the link in the chat. Uh, and your hosts for next week, next month on the 24th of May, will be our Lauras. We call them Lauras. Uh, Livingston and Valpy and the writers will be Ken will be back with us. I will be doing some writing. Kat will be doing some writing. Lisa will be doing some writing. And, and Laura, who's our guest? Yes, our guest uh, next time is, if you were here in January, we had his writing partner, Chris Marshall. Our guest next time uh, is going to be a television writer, producer, six-time Emmy Award nominee, mainly for what we do in the shadows and Frasier and former member of our little company, we will be joined by Sam Johnson next month. So, so incredibly fun. So uh, please join us. And once again, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And uh, listen, let's uh, pour ourselves a glass of wine and we'll do a little chat in here if we want to. And please stick around, put yourself on the, on the screen there. Let's all be a little uh, 